Hello everyone. Uh, it's Thursday, 2 p.m. I uh, want to apologize. We had some technical difficulties yesterday, so we couldn't do the chat at our normally scheduled time. Um, but there's still plenty to talk about today, especially after the Coyotes lost 4 nothing yesterday in L.A. Um, to make kind of their outlook for making the playoffs quite grim with five games to go. Um, so lots to touch on today. We have lots of questions to get to. Um, so we're going to try and um, answer as many as we can. Um, so let's start first of all a uh, question from Ryan. The Coyotes do not seem to have the chemistry they had in the past. What is missing from this team to come together um, to play for each other and not for the individual? Uh, you know, I, I agree that the chemistry just doesn't seem to be there, especially in the forward group. And, you know, I think the last few years what's really helped the Coyotes is they've kind of had set lines and set pairings. And there's just been so much turnover so far this season. I think it's been tough for lines to to have that stability, and I think that kind of trickles down, you know, throughout the whole lineup. Um, this roster has changed. I mean, as as much as the core is here, there there have been changes, and I, I just don't think that you know the pieces are there for them to to try and play the style that they want to play. Um, you know, we've seen them the past few years overachieve and and really stay committed to Dave Tippett's style, but um, you know, players have come and gone. Ray Whitney's gone. Adrian Acoyne's gone. Michael Roosevelt's gone. Some of these players that were really helpful in the team's successful playoff runs aren't here anymore. So, you know, I think it's maybe tough to keep grading this team against the success of the past because even though the goalie's still there, the captain's still there, you know, some of the defense is still there, this is a different team. And I, I think it's been tough for them to play the style that the teams have had in the past because some personnel and key situation isn't there anymore. Okay. David wants to know, is there a reason why we do not address some of the gritty players we have on the roster, especially during a playoff push? We were knocked off the puck several times the last few games. Finesse hockey and defensive attributes are great if they have the support of some strong and gritty players. I think this is a very valid point, and I think it was kind of clear uh, in yesterday's game against L.A. They're so strong and, and physically bruising and gritty physical players, and they just overwhelm the Coyotes. Um, you know, even after the game, Martin Hansel was saying, they out-hit us, they out-competed us, they outplayed us. And that's kind of the standard moving forward. I think L.A. has really kind of set the table for the style that's going to be played in the West and more particularly in the Pacific Division. So if you're looking at them being the barometer, well, you know, the Coyotes definitely seem to need to add more physicality and just sandpaper, grit, you know, strength to their forward group. Um, and they just haven't been able to offer that too much. I'm not sure if dressing a Paul Bissonnette would, would really add to that um, because his role and his minutes are, are, are limited. Um, but you, you definitely need wingers with size and strength. It hurt not having Dave Moss in there because he is one of their wingers who has some size and strength. Um, you know, Hansel's another guy at six foot six. You'd expect him to carry a physical role, and he tries to do his part. But, you know, I, I think this team does need a little bit more physical push, and maybe that's something that the team addresses in the offseason, um, you know, when trying to, to form this team moving forward to see whether or not they can add skill, but skill, uh, you know, like David said, not just finesse skill, skill with strength and, and, and some kind of, you know, muscle behind it, so to speak. Okay, moving on. Guest wants to know, why does Mike Ribeiro seem to be either lost on the ice, turning the puck over consistently? Is, is he trying too hard? Um, you know, I think what's been tough with Mike Ribeiro's, Barrow settling into this lineup is I don't think he's ever found consistent wingers to work with. Um, you know, knowing his style and the way he likes to play, it seems that the attributes for his wingers are pretty clear. He, he, he likes guys that are very tenacious, who are good for checkers, who are really going to kind of do all the dirty work for him and go get the puck, set him up, and then he can kind of work his playmaking uh, abilities. But we haven't seen that too often because we've just kind of seen a car carousel of wingers playing with him. And I think it's been tough for him this year to settle in. Having said that, the expectations still, I think, were for him to provide more of an impact offensive role. We've seen that at times this season, but it's the most critical point of the season right now, and he's been pretty absent on the ice, as evident recently by being a healthy scratch so you know he's a pencil into this team in the future moving forward three more years left on his deal I think a priority moving forward is going to be find line mates that work with him that can stick with him 
Okay. Evervale, do you know of any talk about uh, or what would your opinion be of a shift from Keith Yandel to forward from defense? Although I think he has been better lately, his defensive liabilities are, are definitely noticeable and they kept him off Team USA. Such a transition was favorable, in my opinion, for Dustin Bufflin, and the Oats certainly are deep at D. Um, this hasn't been discussed as far as I know. They see him as a defenseman. He plays defense. He wants to be a defenseman. I don't think a transition like, you know, of the mold of Dustin Bufflin is in the works or has been thought about. Um, you know, he is that prototypical offensive defenseman that we see in today's NHL. Sometimes they come with defensive liabilities and risks, but a lot of teams, you know, take that on for the potential benefit offensively and on the power play, which we've seen uh, Yandel really morph into an elite power play quarterback this season. As much as his defensive game elicits criticism, he has done well on the power play and has really made helped make that an asset for this team. Um, so moving forward, I still think he'll be a defenseman, um, you know, and Basically, right now, that's where the, what they need him to be. They need him to, to be solid in his own end while still creating offense um, you know, on the other side of the rink. Okay, another question from Evervale. What is your opinion on the irony of punishing Rivero for not um, producing by putting him on lines where his playmaking skills may be limited? In my opinion, it makes it much harder for someone like Rivero to work himself up to a top line when he's primarily known for his playmaking. This kind of touched on what I was saying is it seems like it's been tough for Rivero to find line mates that work with him well this season, um, but I just don't think the options are there. Um, Tibbet has kept together recently the Antoine Vermette, Mikel Bodger, Shane Doan line. So, you know, those are probably three of the team's, you know, most skillful forwards. So, you know, that's a line that's working, that has history. They don't want to break that line up. Okay. Hansel and Verbata are probably next two in terms of, you know, in the top six mix. Hansel's a centerman. Verbata and him are stuck together. Tibbet likes to, to keep pairs together. So they're, they're together. So there's really, you know, nowhere for Ribeiro to go on that line. You know, they tried it a little bit early in the season, but moving Ribeiro to wing, but that didn't work. And then the other player maybe is Korpakowski, who's a, a top six forward, and he's been on that Hansel line lately. Um, but if he shifts down, he can play with Ribeiro, but still, I, I think it's just been tough to find the matchup that they want with Ribeiro, and, and it just has pushed him down the lineup. Um, I thought a line that was really good recently was with him and Doan and McMillan, because I think Doan and McMillan are the type of wingers that, you know, do a lot of good board work, are tenacious, physical, go after the puck, and, and I think that suits Ribeiro's style, but still... We've seen the matchups break up since then. McMillan's played with the checks. Um, and Dome, like I said, has been on that Vermette line. So it's I think it's just tough. The options maybe aren't there. And then you see him kind of fall down to a fourth line role, you know, fourth line, um, you know, not playing fourth line minutes. But, you know, I think it's just been tough. And I think, you know, if they really want to maximize their potential of Ribeiro, I think that's something that they look at in the offseason is finding someone for him to play with. Okay, continuing on here. Um, Evervale, you seem to be dominating the chat. You have lots of questions. Um, so I'm going to mix it up a little bit before I get back to you. Um, Hamad wants to know, what do you think has happened to Erat? Uh, he was putting up some good numbers just a couple of years ago. Um, I'm actually going to talk about Erat in my story for tomorrow um, on AZ Central Sports and the Arizona Republic. And, you know, I, I think it's 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 easy to judge him so far, um, you know, to make a hasty judgment that he hasn't worked out or what's going on. Um, but it is it is soon, and he did come in, you know, and get injured soon after getting acquired of the trade deadline. He is under contract. He is going to be here next season, but I think it's just same scenario. It's, it's just tough to find chemistry and, and feel comfortable when there's a constant rotation of, of line mates. Having said that, this is a desperate time of year, you know, it's it's kind of all in to try and win and score and it shouldn't really matter who you're playing with. Um, so I think he's coming around. I think he's been more noticeable the last few games um, and I think it's just finding a comfort level with a new team after, after a head injury, coming back in and just finding that comfort zone. So, uh, you know, I don't think he's you know, at the top of the, you know, culprit list for what's going on with the Coyotes right now, but he definitely is someone who can be better. 
Weston writes, I voted for the hardest working player on the Coyotes for this year. I ended up going with Kyle Chipshira. I think he has really solidified himself on this roster with his play this year. Would you agree? Definitely. I think Chipshira hasn't disappointed. He got that big deal in the summer for him, getting some security, getting locked in, and I think it, it panned out. I think he's really played to his role this year, contributed with offense, being a good player defensively. I don't think I've ever really looked at him too much this season and thought, man, that's that's a bad game. That's disappointing. Um, you know, m mind you, his expectations maybe aren't as high as some, of the, as some of the top six forwards, but he delivers and he plays hard, and you need players like that. Okay. Could Mike Smith return this weekend? Um, guest wants to know. No. Uh, obviously, tomorrow is the last game of the week for the Coyotes. They host the Edmonton Oilers. They were off today. They're going to skate tomorrow morning. But Smith won't be reevaluated until this weekend. So then we'll probably just get an update of when we can expect a return. Maybe next week. I, I really think maybe playoff implications play into this. If this team is looking like it's out of it, maybe they don't rush him back. But that's a good point that we'll, we'll check in on his status in the next few days and see where he's at. Should the Coyotes trade Shane Doan for more star power? Um, you know what? I, I think he's still with this team. Um, he's the captain. He's got a couple more years left on his contract. But I think we'll see his role change over the course of the next few years. Right now, you know, Doan still plays and contributes at the level of a top six forward on this team. Eventually, though, you know, with his age, with his career winding down into, you know, the twilight years, um, you know, his role is going to change. I think he's going to accept playing, you know, a third line role, a fourth line role. I don't think we're at that point yet. This team still very much relies on him and needs him. Um, but, you know, I, I think his value is only diminishing with age. Probably better just to keep him, um, you know, while he's still valuable to this team. Um, another Sonny and Scottsdale, same question about Keith Yandel. Should they play him as a forward? I don't think that plan's in the works, as I mentioned earlier when answering the question. Um, you know, I, I think that they see him as a defenseman. Um, David G, can the Coyotes develop the chemistry to compete in the playoffs between now and then? Were they always missing the chemistry in the beginning of the season and just when other teams improved, they stayed the same? I just don't get how good they looked in the first quarter of the season and they seem to have a half-season meltdown. Uh, I think what happened there was I think just some bad habits came to play um, early in the season when they were winning. If you'll remember, a lot of those games were come from behind wins and shootout wins, and they were, they were finding ways to win when maybe they didn't deserve to. And I think they got um, on this high of, okay, we can win any way we can. We have the scoring. And now that that's dried up, I think they've forgotten that the tenets that they need to play with to be successful. That's the Dave Tippett hockey, the tight, defending, smart, simple, uh, structured hockey. And it's been tough, to, I think, to rediscover that identity when they got used to winning in such a different manner early in the season. Um, this same thing that David G is asking, you know, why are they only playing a 40-minute game instead of what it takes to 60-minute game? I think it goes back to just not having the system and style in place that they need to play. It's outlined for them, but sticking to it for 60 minutes I think is a challenge, especially when the offense hasn't been there. Another question about Mike Ribeiro from Art. Um, he has some numbers, but there appears, appears to be a disconnect. Um, you know, what happens now? Like I said, he's still under contract. Um, he's he's valuable to this team, you know, adding a, a presence at center. I think it really is just finding line mates that work with him. You know, first season will be, you know, on the books, out of the way. Moving forward, I think we should expect more of a comfort level um, for him. A couple last questions here. I'm just going to kind of rattle them off. Um, we'll go a little extra longer today since we had to miss yesterday, but I want to make sure I get all these questions in. Um, which highly admired prospects in the Coyote system do you see making an impact sooner rather than later? Uh, keep an eye out for Max Domi. Uh, he's going to be in camp again this fall. I think he's really going to have a good shot to make this team and really add some scoring punch, hopefully the Coyotes are hoping, um, for this team. Do you think the Coyotes are in line for a large-scale shakeup this offseason if they don't make the playoffs? I do. I think that we see this team, maybe even if they do squeak into the playoffs, get a change this summer. I think they're ready to kind of mix things up a little bit and maybe go a little younger. Like I said, maybe giving a guy like Max Domi a chance. Obviously, you look at the contract situation. There's guys that are on long-term deals. They're going to be here. Um, but maybe we see some accessory pieces added um, you know, that help this team moving forward. 
Uh, Grice has been fantastic. Um, you know, knowing that he is good enough to be a starter elsewhere and that Mike Smith plays better when he plays a bunch of games, how does that set up moving forward for this goaltending core? Well, Smith is here to stay, and I know they'd like to keep Grice as a backup, but really, like you said, it's up for Grice to describe decide if he wants to be a backup or if he wants to maybe elsewhere try and be a number one. The Coyotes tried to talk extension with Grice during the season. Um, he is kind of disappointed with how much he's playing. He's playing a lot now, so we'll see maybe where the conversation picks up in the offseason. Um, la last kind of question here. Um, do you think this team is less physical than they were in their overachieving playoff run, and do you think that allows teams to dictate the game? Uh, I do. I, I think they're missing a little bit more of that sandpaper, that grit that we saw on the back end with the likes of Adriana Coyne, Michael Roosevelt. Um, but, you know, this team has never been a physically intimidating team up front with the forward group, but maybe that's something that needs to change. I think having that physical presence and someone that, you know, not being a goon and fighting, but just being able to be strong on the puck when board battles – I think that's an area that the Coyotes can definitely improve at. We'll wrap it up with just a comment. Um, the handle is bitter in Phoenix. I'm sorry for that. A season of blown leads and mediocre play has me too dejected, dejected to ask any questions, so I just want to thank you, Sarah, for doing such a great job all season. Follow you daily and appreciate the tweets, articles, and insight you give us to Coyotes fans. Keep it up. Thank you. I enjoy it. Only, you know, we're winding down into the final week of the season. Thank you guys for continuing to chat with me and send me comments on Twitter. I hope you're following me at AZC underscore McClellan. I'm also following at AZC Sports. They post all my articles. So we'll be back uh, next week. Could be our last chat of the season, um, you know, as we're into the final week. But um, we'll stay, we'll keep you up to date until then. Um, and then we'll see you next time.